Hey, what's up everybody? Corey here. Today we're going to go over section 16, our lovely book You by Charles F. Hanel. And um, I just want to talk a little bit. Um, you guys probably won't really mind, or it wouldn't even matter. But I, I don't know, I guess I just need to just talk about it. To thine own self be true. It was um something my manager had told me today. Uh, we had a conversation about boot camp training and just who just who I am as a person. And um they they were telling me that you know they, they really love having me there but just as of lately it just hasn't really been seeming to work out. Just my personality, my just, cause I'm they, I'm a very laid back person. You know, I could try to be as enthusiastic as I can, but there's, I guess I'm just not enthusiastic enough for that environment. You know, and and I, I try to be. You know what? Enthusiasm, the the. Enthusiasm. I looked it up before, it just slipped my mind right now. It, enthusiasm is like a lot of energy, you know, high in energy. Absorbing or controlling possession of the mind by the interest or pursuit. A lively interest. And that that a lively interest. You know, I've you know, they made a lot of good points and, and it made me realize just a lot of things with myself that I'm not I don't know, maybe I'm not training material. You know, as much as I love doing it, you know, <laughs> as much as I love fitness. You know, I don't, I'm an educator. You know, I, I got into fitness to teach about the importance of health and wellness. You know, but I, I, I don't ultimately feel that's, that's, that's my purpose. And I, I, it brings me back to when I was talking about these books. You know, throughout the entire time I was working at LA Fitness, throughout the entire time when I, in between, when I was doing my own stuff, you know, when I was trying to train my own, and even here when I'm working at this place, I always have this in the back of my mind. You know, it, it you know, what, we, what have we learned about the mind? When we go all in on something, you know, all in on, 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 one thing, and the mind forces are going to lend all of their powers to us, because that's we put all of our all of our energies into that thing, and you know it it was great for me last year. Um, I don't know as I get older, I, I remember. I've been posted on my Instagram about it because I get older the more there's nothing more important than having peace of mind. You know, there's nothing more greater than just being at peace within yourself. You know, while you, you know, for example, you do something that doesn't make you really feel good and you start to think negatively, you're just being molested by your own thoughts. You know, and all that thought process is you, you move into that state of being. You know, your psyche, you, you start vibrating at that frequency. And you just, you are that for the time being. You know? And yoga. I've been thinking a lot, a lot about yoga. That's actually, we're going to be talking about that next. The wheels of life and the seven chakras. The seven major nerve ganglia within your solar uh, 
I'll just say within your solar system, but yeah, in a way, within your own personal solar system, within your own subconscious mind, within your own mind body. And right now we're gonna we're gonna talk about destiny in this chapter. We're gonna go over a little bit about destiny. And um, one thing that he had brought up to me, he said um he doesn't quite feel. I know yet what I truly desire. And it's like... I go through phases where when I know what I want, <laughs> sometimes I don't know what I want. You know, that's not... It's frustrating. It, it's, it's frustrating. Because I, I want... I just want to be whole. If that makes sense. Just whole. You know, above all else, seek. Seek knowledge. Seek wisdom. Seek health. Seek God. You know, seek you. It's just... I know life is a... It's a process of creating ourselves. But sometimes just like... Why can't I already know? <laughs> you know? Like, I want to know. Just be patient. Be patient with all things. Most importantly, be patient with yourself. Millennium Mindset. We're known to be entering into the Millennium, which is a new age. I actually looked up the, the meaning of what Millennium is. It's supposed to be the period where people know about themselves. You know, the Christ within themselves. <laughs> Excuse me. Millennium is the age, the period, where people know and are aware about the Christ selves that they are. Because so we have the ability to create our life. You know, the fact that I had been smoking weed, you know, s not staying focused on what it is that I truly want, it, 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 it's what caused me to, to to feel all of this confusion. Remember, even th thoughts, we become what we think about. And even our thoughts rest on solid foundations, a clear mind, a clear body. You know... We have the power to create worlds. You and me. Whatever you do, just, just, you just gotta keep pressing through. Cause I, I, I want, I know I want to build something. I know I want to inspire people. I know I want to motivate people. And I know I want to educate people. That's what I know for sure. What exactly, how it is I'm going to go about doing things like that, I don't entirely know for sure. And especially when you're trying to do something in a world so big while you're so small. You know, it's, 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 
you start thinking like, wow, then you don't want to think about that. Because you know if we think it, then that's going to happen. Because then we start attracting into our lives, right? We just have to stay focused on what we, the things that we do want. And stay focused on, on the things that really matter to you. You guys probably think I'm foolish. Sometimes I think I am too. There's even times where I know I'm being foolish. Hold on. If you guys are, if anyone's watching this, if you've recently been through you know, something similar where where you tried something on new and and you you, f you found you can't you can't fit a square into a round peg. You know, it it doesn't fit. And uh, as much as I you know, love fitness boot camp in that, that place, it I don't it's not a fit takes time, right? Things take time. So let's go, let's go ahead and start this chapter. Let's get started. Okay, right now we're on section 16. And this was in, is entitled Destiny. Okay, so let us continue. Beauty always accompanies economy of structure and movement. Indeed, it is the expression of this economy. All improvement in speed and directness of movement must have been adaptive, must have been given the individual an advantage in gaining food, escaping enemies, or in some way making its evolutionary position more secure. He's basically talking about the structure of, you know, in a way we could say the body. You know, we have an advantage of gaining food, escaping enemies, or making... Um, evolutionary, our own personal evolutionary positions more secure, simply because of the economy of our structure and movement, you know, our, 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 our system. Beauty and intelligence are the outcome of different phases of the same forces of organic evolution. What is good we call beautiful. A graceful carriage, a springing, vigorous, rhythmic, rhythmical step, a sweet breath, good teeth, clear complexion, a pleasant musical voice, a handsome shapely neck, red lips, a well-developed chin, and clear, bright, animated eyes are indications of health. The ideals of human excellence, of character, morality, beauty, intelligence, health, sanity, and energy, which we teach our young men and women, cause them to seek these things in their mates. These ideals are thus bred into the physical and mental constitution of the race, they become its most priceless possessions. And because this stream of germ plasm is almost inviolable, inviolable, I N V I O L A B L E, let's go ahead and take a look at what this word means. And from what I'm reading so far, it, what it really sounds like he's saying, okay, invi. Like it it, it kind of sounds like he's talking a little bit about evolution. Okay, inviable means of an organism incapable of sustaining its own life. Incapable of sustaining its own life. And because this stream of germ plasm is almost inviable, it's incapable of maintaining its own life. And it's, it's very interesting because we even learned that molecules are the most simple um, substance which maintains its own identity. And if think this this germ plasm has not yet um, is not yet sustaining its own life, it must be before it becomes a molecule. It comes about that when a race has attained to health and character by means of natural selection, evolution, 
These virtues can be bequeathed in succeeding generations until the river of life empties into the ocean of eternity. And that makes a lot of sense because remember how he was talking about single-celled organisms, that we are in fact immortal beings because the most basis of cell looks for nothing to but to duplicate itself. That's, that's its only thing. The cell cannot die. You know, once it's a single cell, the only thing it looks to doing is making another one of itself. Okay, and we're made of millions and millions of these cells. Remember how he was talking about, we have the ability to live far, many, many, many years. Okay, but just the fact that we're not eating right, we're not healthy, we're not mentally healthy. You know, our state of vibrations are low and our body's responding to that. And at the same time, we're not feeding our body right. So that in turn is also having an effect on our mind. And if you're not exercising, you're not allowing your body to actually clean itself out. You know, there's so many key elements that are going into play when it comes to the functionings of your own being. You know, you, you, have, the, you, you have the ability to do anything and everything. You know, God has given you that power, and that is the power of choice. Okay, being able to choose exactly what it is that you want to do. In order to maintain the equality of the sexes in numbers and quality, nature has ordained that each succeeding generation, the elements of human character, shall cross the line of Genesis. The history of the world reveals the fact that men do not transmit their characteristics to their sons. Neither do women transmit their characteristics to their daughters. No great man has ever yet appeared who did not have a mother who had embodied in her character the elements which made him successful. No woman has ever astonished the world with her genius who was not the offspring of a father who possessed the germ of the same genius. Differences in environment meaning that it, all the, the, the possibilities are within everybody. You know, the possibilities to do anything is within everybody. You know, but it's just choosing to actually do that with our lives, with to choosing to use our mind to to create something or, or just you know, living our life just day in and day out, you know, just existing or actually putting this power we have to, to use. No, you you have the you have the power to change the world. You know, but it starts with changing yourself. No great man has ever yet appeared who did not have a mother who had embodied in her character the elements which made him successful. Okay, hold on. Let me let me no I want to I want to put this one in words. Okay, no great man has ever yet appeared who did not have a mother who embodied in her character the elements which made him successful. Okay, so basically all the characteristics that I have right now are all embodied within my mom. Okay, even if my okay, this okay, I don't want to use that for an example. Okay, I want to use something else. Who did not have a mother who embodied in her character the elements which made him successful. Huh. Yeah, because men cling to their moms and women cling to their fathers. You know, boys look... I know for a fact I was a mama's boy. And, um, yeah, I, I know I want a daughter because I want a little princess. You know, it's very interesting how, how he mentions it here, that no great man has ever ha had anything in his character that wasn't also within his mom. And that brings me back to a quote by, by Abraham Lincoln. And he quotes, he says, All that I am and all that I ever will be, I owe to my mother. It's very, very, very interesting. And he goes on saying, Differences in environment and education have had their influence. But as far as the law of inheritance furnishes a cause of observed effects, there are no exceptions to this rule. In any apparent exception where a son has followed in the footsteps of his father with success, it will be found that the mother possessed the element of character which made the success possible. Because the mom was mom, mom had the characters of success within her, which is why the son was successful. That is very interesting because sometimes sons aren't as successful as their dads. And sometimes sons may be more successful than their dads. You know, it's... it's 
it's very very intriguing when you actually think about it in all ages men have mourned the fact that their sons were unable to follow in their footsteps while the current theology and social custom of society have denied the success to their daughters because the occupation in which those talents would shine have not been considered within quote woman's fears end quote spheres okay s p h e r e and so after decades of misuse and suppression the talent has appeared in the grandson in the same way talented boys inheriting from sensitive and refined mothers the grace which would have made them brilliant musicians have been compelled to adopt commercial pursuits for which they were utterly unfitted good examples of this transference of acquired development to the opposite sex in the third generations are found in the pedigrees of trotting horses the highly trained stallion george Wil wilkes does not appear as the sire of any of the very fast mares but he appears ten times as the sire's sire and as many more times as the sire's grand sire marne kellycock believed that the blood would not tell or if it did tell it would not tell on him Martin's dramatic history and this and the history of his germ cells, his blood, have been related to the little book called quote, "The Calicic Family" end quote, by Dr. Henry H. Goddard, director of the Juvenile Research Bureau of the State of Ohio, and formerly superintendent of the famous school of feeble-minded at Vineland, New Jersey. Okay, let's go ahead and end this one right here. We're already about halfway through this chapter. Um, this video is probably at least 15 minutes long already, so let's go ahead.